एवरी वन एंड वेलकम टू निमिशा ऑडियो बुक्स भगवान श्री कृष्ण सेट वन हू परफॉर्म्स हिज प्रिस्क्राइब ड्यूटीज एंड रिनाउंस द रिजल्ट ऑफ दोज एक्शन इज अ योगी एंड अ सन्यासी वन डज नॉट बिकम अ सन्यासी सिंपली बाय रिजेक्टिंग द परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ सैक्रीफाइस एंड परफॉर्मिंग नो एक्टिविटीज ओ सन ऑफ पांडु अर्जुन दैट विच इज नोन एज सन्यास इज द सेम एज योग one can never become a yogi without renouncing the desire to satisfy the senses for one who is a beginner on the path of yoga action is the means for one who is already practiced in yoga the renunciation of action is the means when one is neither attached to the sense objects nor to the activities that lead to their enjoyment at that time one is said to have attained yoga living beings must elevate themselves by the mind they must not degrade themselves certainly the mind is the friend of the living beings as well as their worst enemy for one who has subdued the mind the mind is a friend however for one who has not controlled the mind the mind is the greatest enemy those who have subdued the mind and are calm attain realization of parmatma super consciousness for such persons heat and cold happiness and distress and honor and dishonor are all the same the yogi who is self satisfied due to his knowledge and realization fixed in his spiritual nature and in control of his sense sees dirt stones and gold equally such a yogi of impartial intelligence sees an honest well wisher and affectionate then factor an enemy neutral persons a mediator the envious a relative the pious and the impious with equal vision a yogi should live in a solitary place with his mind and body full controlled he should be without desire without a sense of possessiveness and must constantly fix his mind on the atma the self within establishing a seat in a clean environment that is not too high or too low a yogi should cover his sitting place with kusa grass a deer skin and a cloth sitting on that seat fixing his mind on one point and controlling all the activities of the mind and senses he should practice yoga to purify himself holding the body head and neck straight he should remain still and steady gazing at the tip of the nose without casting his glance in another directions undisturbed fearless and observing a vow of celibacy he should sit and control his mind by thinking of me as his highest goal in this way the yogi controls his mind withdrawing it from material desires he then achieves supreme peace and liberation from material existence and attains maya bodh one cannot practice yoga by eating too much or too little not sleeping too much or too little oh arjun yoga destroys the suffering of one who is moderate in eating and sleeping who performs all activities in a regulated manner and is well balanced in sleeping and waking when the steady mind is fixed exclusively upon the self then one becomes free from all the material desires such a person is said to be situated in yoga just as a flame does not flicker in a windless place similarly the mind of yogi never wavers in its concentration on the self when the mind is restrained and peaceful by the practice of yoga it becomes detached from the material desires thus one can perceive the shell and attain happiness being situated in the plane of eternal bliss which is beyond the scope of the mundane senses and obtained through intelligence one never deviates from reality upon gaining this position one considers that there is nothing superior to this and does not become disturbed even in the midst of the greatest calamities you should know that this state of being wherein all miseries are destroyed is known as yoga one should practice yoga with determination and an unwa- unwavering mind in order to practice yoga one must reject all thoughts that create material desire and withdraw the senses from the sense objects during the mind gradually 
one should still the mind by mean of intelligence focusing it on the self and nothing else the nature of the mind is flickering and unsteady however one should always endeavor to control the mind from its wanderings and bring it back under the control of the higher self supreme bliss comes to yogi who subdues his passions whose mind is calm who is free of vice and who is always situated on the spiritual plane in this way through the constant practice of yoga a yogi who is devoid of material contamination can attain eternal bliss through contact with the absolute one who is connected to the supreme sees all things equally and perceives the supreme in all living beings and all beings within the supreme for one who sees me in all things and sees everything within me i am never lost and they are never lost to me that you yogi who venerates me with the knowledge that i am situated in all living beings as the super consciousness abides in me in all circumstances o arjun one who regards the happiness and distress of all others equally as if it were their own is considered the best of yogis arjun said o madhusudan i cannot conceive of this system of yoga you have described because by nature my mind is very unsteady the mind is erratic disturbed very powerful and stubborn o krishna i think that to control it is as difficult as trying to control the wind bhagwan shri krishna replied o mighty armed one arjun indeed the mind is unsteady and very difficult to control however it is possible to control the mind by practice and detachment o son of kunti my conclusion is that yoga is difficult to attain if one's mind is uncontrolled but one who endeavors to control the mind by the proper practice can be successful arjun said o krishna what is the destination of a person who has faith but cannot control his mind by the process of yoga and does not attain perfection o mighty armed krishna does such a person being both confused on the spiritual path and having no shelter becomes lost like a scattered cloud o krishna only you can completely remove these doubts of mine and no one else bhagwan shri krishna replied o parth such a person does not meet with destruction either in this world or the next one who performs the act of virtue never suffers misfortune one who falls from the practice of yoga attains the celestial planets and the pious and dwells from many years thereafter they take birth amongst humans in a noble and prosperous family otherwise they may be born into a learned family of yogis certainly such a birth is rarely achieved in this world o descendant of kuru regaining their knowledge of yoga from previous birth they again endeavor to attain success due to the practices of their previous life they are automatically attracted to the yoga process simply by inquiring about this system of yoga one transcends the rituals of the vedas by sincere endeavor the yogi is then purified of all contamination and achieves perfection after many lifetimes he attains the supreme destination such a yogi is superior to the tapasvi one who performs severe penance the janani who tries to achieve the absolute by intellectual pursuits and the karmi one who tries to attain salvation by performing vedic rituals this is my conclusion o arjun therefore become a yogi i consider the best of all yogis to be the bhakti yogi who abides in me who meditates upon me and who worships me with firm faith om tat sat thus ends chapter 6 entitled dhyana yoga from the conversation between shri krishna and arjun in the upanishad known as shrimad bhagavad gita the yoga shastra of divine knowledge from the bhishma parma of mahabharat the literature revealed by vyasa in one of the 100000 verses thank you